Mr. Dark Skin Sam is my neighbor. Hey man, look, man, if you're tuning into this video for the first time, I say, hey, go ahead and subscribe, like, love, and comment down below. You no. feel me? And today, that's what we got. We got the unspeakable. Her on the deep sea. Bro, one place I would never want to be, bro, is the ocean, bro. I would die just a uh, heart attack. Especially like, it wouldn't even be a shark eating me, an <laughs> octopus grabbing his tail. I would just literally die of a heart attack, and it won't be because the water drowned me. And that could be a factor, too, though, because my dumb ass has never swimmed in the ocean, so I don't know. I probably might not be able to swim in that bitch or stay afloat. And, but there's, there's been so many shark shit just popping up randomly, bro. Yeah, somebody getting eaten by shark or... Oh, that nigga that jumped off the boat, bro. And never came and back. still can't find that nigga, bro. Gone, but he got swallowed by a whale or some shit. I saw a nigga oh, get swallowed man. by a whale live on video. You saw that? Yeah, man. Wait, what? It was like these niggas on a fucking, you know, my little canoe shit. Yeah, bro. The whale just, <sighs> just swallowed him. Damn, he nigga, oh, on some, nigga on some, nigga on some Jordan shit. And then the Egypt nigga, they got smacked oh, yeah. up, bro. Bro, that shit, that shit that was, was crazy. Sad, Damn. They did so rest in peace, man. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, hey, man, bro. but let's get into this video, man. Future and Lindsay Nicole. You probably heard me say that I'd rather eat 10 pounds of Popeye's biscuits with no drink than ever go out into the ocean. Well, I'd rather ride cross country on a bike. Oh, these niggas are brave as fuck. No, they're a dead ass brave. There's a lot of living nightmares and paralysis demons come to life if you sink deep enough. And the Megalodon is not one of them. You'll often hear this thing about how the prehistoric apex predator never got discontinued. It's just chilling to step above hell in the abyss. This is Cap. For two, well, actually three good reasons. One, there just isn't enough food to stay a 60-foot queue to the natural order. Two, if nature did keep the same jumbo jaws that peaked in the Pliocene, we at least would have seen a body by now. And number three, why do y'all want this to be alive so bad? I promise you there's way worse things down there. Like, I would evacuate my bowels if I ever saw a team of great white shark. Put me in front of a team posing squid, and I'm shooting more bricks than the entire city of Newark. The big fin squid is easily one of the most disturbing things alive as I'm saying this. It's a team posing predator with arms estimated to max out at just under 30 feet. Scientists believe 30 fucking feet? Which can be easily 20 times its own body length. Just for arms? Fuck. That's the arms? Yeah. Bro, 30 fucking foot, bro. Sit down and that dog can grab something. That shit can step over this fucking house. To floor a trawling nest and feeding on whatever poor soul accidentally bumps into them. You're gonna hear me say believe or we think a lot, and that's because we don't know a whole lot about them. Almost every sighting and virtually every specimen studied were either juveniles or paralarvae. We have no way of knowing exactly what their final form could look like. Fuck. For all we know, this could be Junior, and we just haven't seen Mama Big. Just thought that just putting elbows on a squid would instantly turn it into the spawn of Satan. Oh, and if you thought the Big Fin was just this slow, passive floating predator, then you're seriously underestimating the ocean's ability to massacre your mental health. And if you're curious, Yo! this video was taken about 7,000 feet down in the Gulf of Mexico. But considering they're believed to be the deepest living squids at about 20,000 feet, I have a theory. This is a juvenile, and the big boys are the ones shacking up down in the crotch of the ocean. So this news, the big fin probably only feeds on small fish and crustaceans. Bad news, there are squids big enough to beef with the biggest predators on the planet. And the biggest predator on the planet that isn't a disgraced former YouTuber is the sperm whale. Which on its own would have to be one of what? the most traumatizing things to witness. If there's the squids that fucking big, that's that crazy. Deep sea. Well, the tankiest carnivore on Earth regularly runs face with a giant squid. And by giant, we're talking about calamari growing to an estimated 40 feet long. Not only are they themselves predators that hunt using 20-foot tentacles, they're opportunistic cannibals that would 100% murk their entire family reunion for some calories. Now, nature high-key screwed up their character design. They have a donut-shaped brain and esophagus running through it, meaning if they swallow something big enough, not only do they run the risk of choking to a flatline, they can also factor and reset their entire personality through severe brain damage. Which is why they mitigate this by shredding their victims with a razor sharp beak and what is essentially a tongue with teeth, the radula. That beak oh, is such fuck. a weapon that you'll rarely see a sperm whale that hasn't been tattooed during a struggle with a giant squid. And while uh. the plus size cephalopod usually loses in a war with a whale, they do not make it easy. But the most disturbing thing about them is that I 
Giant squids have the most physically imposing eye in nature, with it being roughly the size of a soccer ball. Contrary to popular belief, huge eyes don't exactly help it see further, but it does mean they're terrifyingly good at noticing objects giving off their own light, okay. which is a lifesaver since oh, when their big stop the sperm whale is on the hunt, modern day Leviathan disturbs glowing creatures like jellyfish and crustaceans. So I never knew squids response. got Having that fucking big. <laughs> that giant squid can detect and use those flashes to avoid becoming a horse. But that also means that if you ever go swimming in the Giga Squid's area code, the flashes you'd create mean that while you might not see it, the same animal that does its own kind dirty would know exactly where you are. And honestly, there's only one thing that could be worse than getting stalked by a school bus sized head foot. There's another squid with hunting tactics so spiritually upsetting, I'm not even gonna talk about it. I'm gonna go ahead and use a lifeline. The Humboldt squid, also known as the Red Devil. I'm Lindsay, by the way. Hi. Humboldt squid are found in the eastern Pacific Ocean, typically between 600 and 2300 feet below the surface of the ocean. And their nickname comes from the way they use their pigment cells called chromatophores to communicate. You're probably familiar with chromatophores through videos of different cephalopods using them to change color, blending into their surroundings, and even dream. And Humboldt squid notably use them to turn bright red when they're aggravated. Hence the nickname Red Devil. It's very on brand. They're also extremely predatory and have been known to act aggressively towards scuba divers on rare occasion, which becomes a bit more terrifying when I tell you that they can get to 8 feet long and 100 pounds. Now you might be thinking, Lindsay, that is not that big. What about the giant squid and the colossal squid that can both get to like 40 feet long? Well, I haven't told you the best part yet. The humble squid is known to live and hunt in groups of up to 10, no, up to 100, no, a thousand, yes, in groups of over a thousand. One, thousand squid. That's about 990 too many if you ask me. While hunting in these groups, they use their chromatophores to communicate with each other, coordinating movements and attacks, allowing them to take down larger prey, dragging them into the depths until they go unconscious. Scientists have identified some of these communication patterns, as you can see in this little chart, but still don't know exactly what any of them mean. But regardless, that sounds like one of the worst ways to be unalived in the ocean. Oh wait, this isn't a TikTok collaboration. That sounds like one of the worst ways to die in the ocean. <laughs> <laughs> Block party or squaring up with a live action kraken, there are many aspects of the deep sea that end up with you putting your therapist up a tax bracket. And a lot of that's because of this cute little thing known as deep sea gigantism. The idea that the cold temperature, the dissolved Man, oxygen, and the lack the of fresh feathers this? allow some animals to escalate to the biggest and most terrifying versions of themselves. Exhibit oh, A, the uh, Japanese spider crab, which can measure 12 feet across from claw to claw and weigh as much as a human toddler. Only thing worse than a giant spider crab is a giant crab spider. This is an Antarctic sea spider, a dinner plate sized demon spawn that hunts by sucking the life out of its prey through its proboscis. Now technically, they're not actual spiders, but also I imagine most people watching technically don't give up, especially since this one looks like it identifies as a face hugger. Then there's a giant isopod, which is essentially an aquatic cockroach big enough to be cradled like a baby. No clue why you would though. And if you're looking for a truly supersized animal crossing, the oarfish should be on your list. The giant oarfish can grow to well over 30 feet long, and there have even been claims of those in the neighborhood of 50 feet. Proof that back in the day when we had stories about sea monsters, they weren't lying, they just didn't have all the names yet. Also, if you like that one earlier, we're friends now. But with deep sea gigantism and the endless expanse of ocean acting as a canvas for shaped on to practice his art, if you dive deep enough, uh -huh. there be monsters. So if you saw the pun, the pun earlier, we're friends now. Uh, that pun earlier, that stories about sea monsters, they weren't lying, they just didn't have all the names yet. Also, if you caught that pun earlier, we're friends now. But with deep sea gigantism and the endless expanse of ocean acting as a canvas for shaped on to practice his art, if you dive deep enough, there be monsters. For example, this. This isn't an animal. It's a group of animals joined together in something like a hive mind. So we're not talking about it. We're talking about them. And so farm <laughs> like this come in many forms. Like the Portuguese man of war armed with venom to ensure that the excruciating experience of meeting one is permanently etched into your brain. And there's a prior dubia, a giant safon for that can fly the total length of up to 160 feet. And even though it's a collective group of tiny animals, its length could humble a blue whale, making it technically the longest creature on the planet. Or at best, a modest second, since the bootlace ribbon worm had been reported to reach 180 feet in length. And Whoa. it's toxic because the ocean, and of course it is, with nasty smelling mucus potent enough to life deprive the crabs it likes to eat. Like I said, whether it's Lucifer's tapeworm or a flying spaghetti creature, there be monsters. And it gets so much worse than a giant worm, because as terrifying as the deep sea is, it's also nasty. And there might not be anything more repulsive than the hagfish. This loogie linguini feeds on the rotting corpses yeah. and carcasses that sink down into its domain. And since they don't have any actual teeth, the graveyard guppy feeds by sliding into an opening and eating the decomposing body 
from the inside out. And you would think that something that tastes like a casket wouldn't have to worry about getting put on the plate itself. Again, you're giving the ocean too much credit. As self-defense, the hagfish will sweat buckets of slime, a phlegm jacket that's thick enough to clog the gills of anything hungry enough to F around and unlucky enough to find out. To the point where this is the end game of a truck transporting hagfish on the highway, crashing. Now you've definitely seen this picture before, but have you ever stopped and asked yourself what they were doing there in the first place? You remember how I said nothing that eats like a hagfish should ever have to worry about getting eaten? Well, yeah. simple. For these hagfish, their final destination were dinner plates in Asian countries such as South Korea where they're considered a delicacy. Now, I'm not one to judge other cultures, but we seem to have a habit of constantly trying to eat all the things nature went out of its way to tell us not to. So one thing you won't see as a main course is something ironically named after a fruit. The sea cucumber is like the hagfish in that its meal prep consists of all the things we normally flush, burn, or bury. All the soul evacuated bodies that sink down to the ocean floor instantly get put on the cucumber's grocery list. It's a literal bottom feeder, and I mean that since I'll also make a meal out of feces. But like with vultures, if Thanos said beef with sea cucumbers, the world would become an infinitely more disgusting place. That's not the only way sea cucumbers contribute to society. They're also often used as a protective bunker for fish and, well, let's just say they break in through the back door. Oh yeah, it's a violation of the highest natural law. It gets worse when a pearl fish decides to have a play date right next to its prostate. I don't even know if they have a prostate, but you get what I mean. And if that makes you uncomfortable, here's an ad to give you time to mentally prepare for what's next. This adorable little guy is known as a basket star. It's a type of brittle star and an echinoderm, which actually makes it a close cousin to the sea cucumber. <laughs> if you ever learned about fractals in geometry, oh, that's why the repeating oh, pattern of branching arms might look familiar. It's also why the U.S. is really wasting $20 billion a year. This nigga got it in his hands, bro. What's happening right here. Ugh. Because of the unsightly way basket stars get from A to B, they've also earned the nickname Sea Snakes. I feel itchy all of a sudden. However, even though it looks like something Lucifer would use to pleasure himself, they eat mostly <laughs> self plankton and are pretty much harmless for the most part. It and was honestly, a treat, that pretty much but... describes 80% of the nonsense in the deep sea, only really harmful to your peace of mind. Like, take the frilled shark. Having been around for 80-something million years, not only is the frilled shark a living fossil, it's Dad like the like like best beta version of sharks today. Also, don't let this video... Dad nigga look like Pulumi. What you mean by that? Bro, you cannot sit here and tell me that's not the face you make. <laughs> bro. bro, that you know that face you be making, bro? Nah, bro. Hey, you be off the... A living fossil. It's likely nature's rough draft beta version of sharks today. Also, don't let this video fool you. They can grow to a respectable six feet long. Also, they can be pregnant for three and a half years, which honestly makes about as much sense as everything else down there. Wait, and in terms of your <laughs> mental health, the frilled shark is pretty harmless. Until you look them in the mouth. The devil's flashlight has hundreds of needle-like teeth to ensure that anything that gets caught in there doesn't get a second chance to pursue. You not get out of that. Force shark has been around long enough to have attended Savage Wedding. Bro, I don't know why. Sharks have the most like they're struggling weird with their fucking system. teeth, bro. Like I said, though, they're not a threat to humans. But like I also said, they're literally they're just meant cheap, to so tear you apart. Couch, don't look a frilled shark in the mouth. But yeah, you'd be surprised at just how many types of sharks you'll find in the same neighborhood SpongeBob got stranded in that one time. You have 20-foot sleeper sharks that are somehow able to use stealth to just spawn and inhale sustenance like a water Kirby. Speaking of sleepers, in 2015, a Pacific sleeper was recorded in the Solomon's Island. Why is that important? Well, its home address was right under an active volcano, proving that if any animal had plot armor, it'd be sharks. Then you have the ghost shark, which, okay, yep, yeah, you got me, is an actual shark. It's a close cousin known as a chimera. The, the ghost part, though, that, that's on brand. They kind of remind me of the dry bones fish from Mario. The ghost and our shark doesn't even have the teeth you'd expect it to have, but instead they have plates that they use to grind up food. But since nature's constantly overcompensating, chimeras do have venomous spines that are harmful to more than just your mental well-being. But by far the weirdest thing about them, chimeras have a tenaculum on their forehead. A tenaculum is a reproductive organ, meaning this fish has a... Yeah, on his forehead. Venom and Got a dig on that the forehead. side. This oh, fish fresh out of Tim Burton's wet dream is actually pretty cool looking. And I'm just gonna say, I think they're cute. And I'm perfectly fine with standing on the hill alone. However, I don't think you'll find a single soul on this next shark's hill. Feast your eyes on the goblin shark. A demon dog looking fish with a mouth that snaps like nobody's business. They're rarely seen but are known to live in oh, oceans four. all around the world. At depths of up to 4,200 feet below the surface of the ocean. And are estimated to get to 18 feet long. Which is really big for a deep sea shark. You might have seen videos online of their jaws just 
Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Yeah, bro, that shit is all, that's all types of comedy. Bro, jellyfish, bro. I mean, yeah, but look at the way this motherfucker look. Play that shit. Surgery, he be cute, but that's just me. That being said, there's a lot of pretty dope things just chilling in the deep. Take the barrel <laughs> fish with a transparent head that means it can spot ops or prey directly above it. Thanks to those two green dummy looking orbs that are actually ops <laughs> or the ultra rare giant phantom <laughs> jellyfish equipped with 30 foot arms that makes this ET that like my nuts like the whale shark. And when I say rare, I mean this jelly's only been seen like a hundred times. Bro, y'all can't tell me that only like a buck to say, bro. Right now is kind of wild. Yo, Yo that shit looks crazy though. By turning itself into a ball to discourage predators from eating it. And if this right here looks familiar, Yo, what the? right to his thighs. The vampire squid does the inverse as they'll turn themselves inside out and into their own personal panic room whenever they're pressed by a possible predator. And how about a sea pig for you? Take everything I said about sea cucumbers and forget it for a second because honestly, they're just really cute in a way I can't fully explain. But it's not hard to see what makes this squid instant serotonin. Rosia Pacifica, or the stubby squid, is actually more like a cuttlefish. It's also a cuddly fish, and it's nature's apology letter for the sheer trauma it saturated the ocean with. It's actually real. What Mills the fuck did they just watch? Eyes help it catch prey on a nocturnal schedule. It's also important as an environmental indicator, since scientists will often study their responses to changes in water pH and use that to determine how polluted the water is around them. Which you would think would earn this anime octopus the respect of the scientific community. Well, you'd be wrong. There's a video where some scientists found one, and let me just say, not even Hiroshima got roasted that. Heart. But that's gonna do it for this video. Make sure you go ahead and drink water, hug your moms, go subscribe to Lindsay's channel, link will be in the description. Shout out to Lindsay for being in this video, and I'ma see y'all in the next one. So, some other Aerobi team just came before and just left it here. It's like some little kid dropped their toy. No, it's Irani who got the movement. Oh, okay. He's awesome, though. He is awesome. Oh, that's a good focus right there. That's great that motherfucker eyeballs. You're not beating that nigga in a staring contest. A, no, <laughs> nah. <laughs> you nah, that lose. shit do look like a, a toy. I ain't gonna lie, my black guy would have probably thought it's a toy. I would try to grab that shit. What's all that? Like that <laughs> 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 he said, you get close to that motherfucker. <laughs> 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 Uh, the, squid that that, the squids that hunt in a, th a group of a thousand, yeah, that's those crazy. niggas are yeah. unstoppable. I don't see nothing stopping them niggas in the How ocean, they bro. Communicate? I'm I just I, like ants, bro. bro. A thousand is actually ridiculous. Yeah, that's nothing crazy. is stopping those niggas in the sea. Like, what is stopping them, bro? Them niggas are fucking army. Bro. If they want to eat something, they're eating that. They're, they're eating like that the shit. hyenas of the fucking deep <laughs> blue, bro. <laughs> hey, hey, hey. Are you hearing? <laughs> Oh uh, yeah, bro. It's I rap. imagine a thousand hyenas, bro. Oh, fuck, nigga. Yeah, you know it's already bad enough. You see five hyenas, yeah. bro. <laughs> it's already bad, 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 enough. bad enough. Bro, you're gonna die. Like, there's no, no reason you can't. Escape you smacking one hyena though, but anytime you start seeing two, three, four, yeah, the them nigga scatter bite. Man, one bite is like seventeen bites. <laughs> Shit, crazy. Hey, man. But look, man, that'll be for the video, man. So, Let's know what you guys think about this video. It's very interesting. Let yeah. us know if you guys learned anything from this video, too, man. Yeah, I sure hell did. <laughs> and, and then, you know, don't forget about that fish, you know, with the cock on his head. But, hey, yeah, we're going to talk about that. Well, that uh, see-through-ass fish, man. That's a uh, creep. Hey, man, but please don't forget to like, share, subscribe if you're new. God loves you. God bless you. And we out of here.